Good day, fellow investors. In these crazy financial times, it might be time to think about protection, about hedging, and Mark Spitznagel is out with a new book, Safe Haven, Investing for Financial Storms. Mark Spitznagel is the investment officer at Universa Investments, where they do long tail hedging. He's the author of Safe Haven, and perhaps an even better book, but really longer and uh, really into the details, but I really enjoyed it, is The Dow of Capital, which is another book, heavy, but I recommend it to anyone that wants to learn about long-term investing and how best to do it. And with that long-term hedging that Mark Spitznagel did, he also has a goat farm, we'll talk about that later, in the first quarter of 2020, he booked a 4,144% return. Yes, you heard that correctly, 4,144% in one quarter, which is what he does with long-term, with long-tail hedging, so invest small sums, but when a crash happens, he gets a bang for his buck and makes 40, 50 times his Money. Over the years, his fund produced 76% per year. That's a staggering annual return with risk mitigation, long tail hedging strategies. Of course, if you do the same calculation before the last crash, then it would be only marginally better, but still better for the protection that it gives when it comes to crashes. And the point is this, that you, if you have insurance, if you have protection, then you can invest 3.3% in Universa's fund, hold the rest long by being invested, and you get the benefits of being long while you mitigate your risks, and when the US market fell 12%, the same portfolio would have been flat, and over the long term, beaten the S&P 500 by, what is this, 3.5 percentage points or 350 basis points. And also something to discuss the risks. He calls the Fed stimulus very, very, very destructive that at some point they will not be able to increase the balance sheets to lend more to the system and then all hell will break loose. But there is one big issue here that when the market isn't crashing, nobody likes these hedging strategies because they have a cost, so it's complex, it's ugly, it usually is insurance, so who wants to pay insurance when things go well? And a great example of behavioral economics is CalPERS, the poor teachers of California pension fund, and their investment officers had a deal with Universa and they called off that deal in October 2019 because they said no, it's bad to be a tail risk hedge etc. It doesn't pay, the markets go only up and they just did it just before the crash and just seconds before this happened. That's how the human psychology works, the human brain. And that's something you have to see whether investing in insurance protection fits you. Mark Spitznagel has been doing that for decades and he really augments the idea of risk and reward, which is also what we'll discuss now. If you enjoy this content, please smash that like button. Let's discuss the first principles that Mark discusses. Investing is a process that happens sequentially over a lifetime. What does this mean? Whenever you look at a portfolio, investment managers, whatever, they try to synthesize investing to now. So do this 40% here, 20 here, ta -ta -ta -ta. now, that's it. The most expensive cup of coffee you ever had in your life with an investment banker, but nobody thinks, okay, investing, okay, starts now, see you over 40 years, what's the goal, how will that evolve over time, and what are the risks, rewards, how can we maximize your long-term returns? Not short-term under or over performance related to the market, but really maximizing your compound long-term wealth. And that's the second goal. Investing has one goal, to compound your wealth at the maximum rate over the long-term. And this is completely opposite of what modern finance 
discusses. If you look at modern finance, then they say the higher the risk, the higher the return, the lower the risk, the lower the return. The thing is that risk is measured by volatility and volatility is not something that impacts your long-term wealth. Cumulative returns over time impact your wealth. And if you look, okay, if you want to be diversified, Let's say you started with $1 here, invested just in stocks, you would have more than a million now. If you invested 50% of that in bonds, the more than a million would become half, as you would get just 1,000 by investing in bonds. Even worse in treasury, bills, gold, a little bit less. It worked here in the 70s when it was not controlled anymore, but it's tricky, a lot of noise, and of course, inflation would destroy something if you held it in cash. If we look at the diversification in the average investor, yes, the modern finance thesis lowers your drawdown. So the S&P went down significantly in the March 2020 crash with 40% in bonds or 60%. You would have done better during the crash with just a 20% decline but over the long term, of course, stocks have done better and therefore those are maximizing your long-term compounding rate and increasing your long-term wealth. Of course, stocks are more volatile in the short term, but if we look at returns over the long term, worst case scenario for stocks is 6%, 17% positive. Bonds is already lower. So also by diversifying, you are not really by diversifying you see here only stocks worst case six percent worst case five percent with bonds so you are worse off by diversifying this is absolutely not about timing the market he says that the market is extremely risky that at some point the fed will not be able to increase the balance sheet so very very bad predictions but he says when it comes to investing you want to be agnostic of the market you want to be that Whatever happens with the market, you do well. And therefore, he says that by having some insurance, you can be long and no matter what happens, you will do well. And the fact is that we have to control what we can control, thus our long-term portfolio, the risks and reward included there, we can assess them now, what those are, and see whether it brings to our financial goals, and then also how much we want to put, if we want to put, into insurance. And the only scoreboard that counts, principle number three, is your final wealth. Not what happens in between, but 20 years from now, if you start with one, will it be two, will it be five, will it be ten? That's of huge importance and therefore you have to focus at compounding at the highest maximal rate over time. And that's why there is only one investing path for you now. If you have money now and you want to compound it over 20 years, let's say you have 1 million, you add 1000 per month, you do that for 20 years, then you hope to retire, let's say that estimated interest rate 10% and let's make a 9% variance and if we calculate you see here that the differences are staggering with 19% your million gets to 34 million with 10% to seven and a half million with 1% you just get to 1.4 million these differences are huge and have a huge impact on your finances. Whether you will retire with 30, 20, 10 or one and a half million, it's a huge difference and that's exactly the only thing that matters. So when it comes to investing, you have to think, okay, how can I compound for the next 20 years at the maximal possible in rate of return? And if we go to safe haven this is borrowed from the book of course if you buy the book everything that he makes from books is donated to charity he has no interest in making money he doesn't accept clients so it's just charity work to share knowledge and uh, you can buy the book i'll put links in the description below if you click on the link i get a fee if you don't then Amazon gets a fee. If you are an Amazon shareholder, you might want to help it. We'll also analyze Amazon in the coming weeks, I promise. So I'll see you for that. And discussing here, 
You see here, they plotted 25 years possible SAP 500 returns over time. And you see, here are the outcomes from 10,000 pets of possible investing in the SAP 500. And you can see that if you get the worst 5% cases, you don't make any money over 25 years. If you get the best 5% cases, you make from 15 times your money to 100 something times your money. But this is, okay, let's say random, focusing on the S&P 500. The averages are there, so average wealth over time compounding at a good rate, but you don't know whether you are here now, whether this will be your future or this will be your future. And this is a bet you don't want to make in life. Okay, maybe I will retire with 1 million, maybe I will retire with 15 million. That's crazy. You have to find an investing way that you're guaranteed to get at some point where your wealth and returns will be satisfying because the rest is just betting and you don't want to bet. There is a huge nice discussion in the book about arithmetic averages, geometric averages. So the first part of the book is dedicated to that. So I really urge you to read, to take your time if you are more interested. Let's start with the definition, safe haven definition, preserving and protecting your capital and of course shelter from financial storms. But Spitznagel adds a concept and that's the cost effectiveness of safe havens. Safe havens, everyone says gold, bonds, cash, uh, rushing to safe havens, but that hasn't been really effective over the long term, which means it hasn't increased your wealth. Diversification is something that the industry loves, but if it doesn't increase your wealth, then it's diversification, which is something that lowers your wealth over the long term, and that's something you have to be wary of. He discusses the first part, so you are all in in stocks, and we already discussed if the worst case scenarios materialize, it ends ugly for you. Then you can say, okay, I'm invested 40% in cash. The thing is, it's okay, but there is a cost to doing that as it lowers your long-term averages. It lowers the outcomes, but the net portfolio effect is a little bit negative. And then if you're insured, the net portfolio effect skews you to the positive. You can see here that the returns can still be at zero net portfolio returns. Of course, here the distribution is crazy, but if you can compound and if you have insurance, then you can compound at a much higher rate of return and the net cost is higher by being insured. And you want to skew your returns to the positive to increment your compounding over time. Here you have, again, whether it is cost effective to in go into safe havens, insurance is the most cost effective, gold was very cost effective when there was high inflation in the 70s and early 80s. Since then there has been a lot of noise but it still fits the characteristics according to the data. 20-year treasury bonds are borderline but now with the incredible low rates it might not B and the others are less and less cost effective from an increasing wealth perspective. And also he discusses in this, I found in some interviews, how hedge funds are terrible and he can't give you a reason why the hedge fund industry should exist. So it's not really easy about just hedging, it's just about finding ways to improve your long-term returns because what hedge funds have going for them is that they lose less in a crash and make less in normal markets. It just makes people poorer and that's not cost-effective protection. So let's talk about insurance. Of course, he doesn't say exactly how and what to do. It's a very specific job that he does and by telling everyone it would cost him his advantage, of course. But we can just start thinking about and then it's really about personal situations. Okay, how much do I want to be insured? Where can I find it? And then you have to put in the time if it's worth for you and see 
where, how, and we'll discuss a quick example. So he immediately says a big warning that derivatives are <laughs> weapons of mass destruction in the wrong hands. And I think it's enough for people to just be realistic about the risks and risk mitigation strategy. So that's also a start from the book, just thinking about what can happen and what would it impact you. So his strategy involves buying expensive put options on stocks. Of course, they say, this is from the Financial Times, that strategy according to CBOE is down 40%, but that's again, according to Spitznagel, garbage. They're building a portfolio I would short, he says. The cure should not be worse than the disease. And the goat farmer here is he with his organic goat farm. And he says that he exploits properties in the markets that take years and years and even decades to show themselves. And the key is that these protections cost almost nothing to put on during good times and can be sold at almost infinite prices during bad times, if that happens. That's what happened with his 4,000% return. And then they ask him about arbitraging away his edge. He says the market simply has too much of a herd mentality to start thinking about this and to make these things expensive. On warnings, he says there is a limit to sovereign debt and there is a limit to central bank balance sheets. And he thanks central banks for his business of protection. He's not kidding about that, even if it sounds funny. But also on the markets, he says that people who think markets are cheap now are absolutely kidding themselves. So let's discuss the game. Insurance, we said options. So you can go on the option chain. And if you want to protect yourself, this is for one year, January 20, 2023. If you want to protect yourself from losses, this is for the SPY, you have to pay about 9% to buy a put and then whatever happens to the market, you will be safe, but you will have to pay 9%. How does this work? Well, you can see here, this is for a strike price of 320. So if you buy this out of the money long term, longer term, puts, then you can see in the uh, start of January, you could have paid, what is this, about seven for this put. And just during the market, let's say, fall over the last few weeks, it would be worth 12. So you would have made 40% there. Of course, if the market really crashes to 320 over the next year, then this option would be worth much, much more, of course, depending on when and timing and decay and everything. But you have to see, okay, if I put something, a percentage point of my portfolio every year into this as a cost, and then if the big crash happens, I am protected as the option works the other way, also on stocks, you can do it. There are many, many ways. Then you have to see, okay, how does this fit my strategies and whether I want to work on this? Of course, if the market, the option doesn't materialize and uh, it simply decays, you lose all your money. So you are certainly losing when bad things don't happen, but you should be gaining when bad things do happen. There's also shorter times, many, many option strategies. And the problem is, as Mark says, that when you start with options, it's very easy to just get taken by them and start trading. And usually when people start trading and start a little bit more, oh, there is a crash coming, let's put a little bit more. And then it's again, detrimental to your wealth. So this is really about insurance. You have to read the framework here and then you can decide whether you want to implement something like this in your portfolio. It's not easy, but you have to really as a value investor, if you start thinking about it, okay, so much every year, no matter what, finding a good benefit or every six months rolling, etc. then you find a good benefit for you. And then you say, okay, this is what I will do. I can sleep well because if there is a 50% crash, I will make 20, 30 times my money on my option and I will balance my long-term 
returns, which will allow me to stay long with the other 99% of my invested money. So the key takeaway is it's your money, it's your life, it's your goal, and you have to find the best way for you. Nothing else matters, and there is only one path that will work. So you might want to narrow the range of outcomes for that path so that you are most certain about getting to those goals. That's what nobody in the market is thinking about now. And always, when it comes to hedging, assess the cost effectiveness of that insurance. 50% in bonds with inflation, with historically low interest rates, it's not cost effective. Gold, there is too much noise, etc. So you have to see whether it really pays and whether it increases your long-term average wealth. So this was complex. Here you can check what I do for more info. I also have a hedge. Check some of my other videos. There will be plenty more on value investing, long-term investing, and perhaps even about hedges down the road in the future. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.